I just rewatched Nino Kuni on Netflix. What do I think about it? Stay tuned and find out. Greetings, gemstones. It's your boy, Templeton Page Taylor. Welcome to another new episode of Hidden Gem. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And today, we're going to talk about Nino Cooney on Netflix. Major spoilers ahead. I will be spoiling this movie. So if you haven't seen this movie, definitely watch it. It's still on Netflix right now. And then come back and check out my review. And leave your comments and let me know what you think. Daddy. Yeah? Dirt. Okay. Daddy duties and all. So, Nino Kuni starts out with this old man trying to do some kind of magic on the roof of a hospital. Hold up. First thing I want to say is that you do not have to play Nino Kuni Wrath of the White Witch or Nino Kuni 2 Revenant Kingdom to understand the plot of this story. But if you have played the first game, you'll find that they have things such as familiars, world swapping, counterparts between each worlds that are very similar to the first game. Now, back to the review. The nurse then asks the old man to step down from the fan that he's standing on. <clears throat> the old man tells her that if he interrupts the magic, she could cause an explosion, and she's just basically trying to do what she can to get a hold of him. It cuts to our three main characters shortly after that. Those would be Yusuke or Yu, Haruto or Haru, and Kotona. No nickname. These are your three typical high school students and by the end of the day, they split up, go their own ways to go home. Kotona, although, ends up being followed. Followed by who do you ask? Somebody from Tokyo Ghoul. He somehow decided to jump from that anime and go into this movie here. The Tokyo Ghoul stabs her with a knife and then fades away. After which, Haru does eventually show up, tries to take her to the hospital, and he gets caught in traffic. <clears throat> so, he's stuck in traffic. You daredevils and rolls his way into traffic to push Haru and Kotona out of the way of a truck, since their lives are in danger, all of a sudden there's a bright flash of light. Both Kotona, I'm sorry, excuse me, both you and Haru are transported to the magical world of Evermore, where they look around and nothing is the same. You know, they don't know what happened to Kotona, and their goal is to try to find Kotona in this new world, because they got transported there, why not her? And they go to a little pub, that's what I look for. And they meet a couple of characters that are uh, that are sitting there in the pub, and they basically are looking for their friend. They describe their friend and everything else, and out of nowhere, the pub owner is like, "Well, she might look like Astrid, who was on this poster on our wall." And they're like, "Oh my God, that is Kotina on the wall," but it's not. It's Princess Astrid. So they said they ask, "Where is this Astrid?" Pub owner tells uh, tells the boys that she's in a castle. Boys sneak into the castle via a doctor's carriage and when they get into the castle uh, they climb out of these uh, gigantic vases that they were both hiding in pretty smart sneak behind a pillar the doctors try to heal the princess and they can't heal the princess at all the curse that is on her ends up basically destroying all of these doctors well, then everybody ends up leaving the room because they can't figure out what to do. The young boys end up walking, running up to Princess Astrid's bed shortly after everybody leaves. Haru can't see anything, but Yu sees a knife in the mist. He ends up grabbing onto the knife, pulling it out, therefore saving the princess, being found out by some guards who end up bringing them in front of the king who believes that these two young men are actually spies from the Black Castle. But the princess shows up and she's like, these young men saved my life, I'm cured. So, uh, father, you should 
you know, give them a pardon. You know, they, they've done nothing wrong. So he does that. He pardons them, they leave the town, they go back to the pub. The pub owner says, hey, I've got a room, you guys can sleep in it. While they're passed out at nighttime, it cuts back to the castle, and Nas, the magic minister, says, Your Highness, I still believe that these guys are traitors, and we should do something about them. So they get the invitation to the castle the next morning. They think they're going there for a reward, when they are actually going there to be basically tested and it's more of a ruse. And once the king's like, hey, these are these guys are doing pretty well, they're fighting really well. Princess shows up and she's like, what are you doing? Why are these guys fighting in an arena? What's going on? So the king bringing them up to the front after they basically defeat all the other soldiers in the arena. And as they kneel down, well, they don't really kneel down, they're just standing in front of them. They're basically arrested because Nas has still convinced the king that these guys are spies. And then Yu says, hey, Haru, I have an idea. Let's put our lives in danger. That's how we got here. That might be how we get back to the real world. Haru says, yeah, that's a good idea. So while they are trying to explain to the, to the king that they're not spies, but the kingdom won't listen to them, Haru's like, you're not going to listen to us. And then they basically just take that leap of faith. They run towards the throne. They jump over the throne through a ring of fire, and while uh, they're falling to their deaths, another big flash of light happens, and they're back to the real world. So while being back in the real world, the two young boys are basically sitting there. They're watching Kosina playing lacrosse. Uh, she's in a sports. Uh, Haru is also in a sports. He's on the basketball team. And Haru's like, I'm just glad to be back. Kotina's safe. She's uh, looking all right. And Yusuke's like, I'm not sure. I th also think there's some kind of connection to that, real, that other world. We got to go back there. Haru's like, no way. We don't have to go back there whatsoever. Well, then it ends up cutting to the kingdom, saying that they're basically going to be attacked. There's going to be this war going on between the Black Castle and uh, the Evermore Kingdom. And you also end up finding out at the same time that, uh, that Kotona has a malignant tumor. She only has about three months to live. Because the two boys, you and Haru, find out about that, Haru thinks that Kotona is getting worse because they saved Princess Astrid in the Evermore Kingdom. And Yusuke is like, I'm not quite sure that's how it works. I know there's a connection, but it's not the way you think. Well, they end up getting into an argument. Haru's like, if we ever go back there, I'm going to kill the princess because I do not want, I do not want Kotona to die. In the middle of the argument, when the boys are going back and forth, Tokyo Ghoul shows up one more time, and he ends up about to stab them, again, putting their lives in danger, and they're back in the Kingdom of Evermore. While back there, though, the boys have been separated, and they show the Black Castle. Haru ends up appearing in the Black Castle. As I was saying, Haru is in the Black Castle. While in the Black Castle, he meets Galaroth. Alderoth, the Black Castle's king, so to speak. And he basically says, hey, so join me on my uh, attack towards the Evermore Kingdom. Haro's like, absolutely. I am going to kill the princess and save my love and my world. Evermore Kingdom. You ends up being the knight all of a sudden. He's basically the one in charge of the attack towards the Black Castle's attack, and he also has to protect Princess Astrid. Astrid thinks that you should kill her because she's the reason why all of this is happening anyways, because she has the feeling that the connection is just like Haru says, when he was like, no, it's not that at all. I'm pretty sure it's not that, so I'm not gonna kill you. You're not gonna be in harm's way. Well, then the battle assume, uh, assumes for a little bit, and next thing you know, Haru gets to the front of the castle. Yu's like, no, I'm gonna stop you where you stand. Haru's like, I'm gonna do everything I can to kill the princess. They start fighting each other. Uh, before there's one final blow be to the, between the two of them, um, Yu's like, we were never like this growing up. And he has a flashback of when they first met and they explain how Yu was a baby. He died in, he was the only survivor from a plane crash. He never knew his mom and dad. He broke his legs when he was a baby, so he's been paralyzed ever since then. 
And then he ended up meeting Haru because Haru and a couple of his friends were at a construction site. There's a dog there. The other boys ran away. Haru stayed and then he ended up running away from the dog. Yusuke basically stopped the dog from attacking Haru. They had some kind of relationship they built up there. Little kids are easily friend friendly to each other and they became friends since they were kids and it's been like that ever since then. And well, that what that does is that brings them back to the real world. Once back in the real world, all of a sudden it cuts to a young lady named Saki, or Miss Saki, you calls her. He, she is his sister slash caretaker. Well, she ends up going into her shop, and during that time, Tokyo Ghoul shows up and says, since I can't find you or Haru, I'm gonna kill you instead. You and Haru do show up and say, hey, watch out for that guy, you know, get, keep away from him. And all three of them run away and they get inside uh, Saki's car and they drive away. At this moment, Tokyo Ghoul turns into a giant spider and ends up chasing after Saki, Yu, and Haru. Saki's like, what's going on? The boys realize that there is a connection between the two worlds. And it's more of what you think, not what Haru thinks. And mind you, they're still being chased by the giant spider and he ends up shooting his web, he grabs onto the car and somehow, I guess because she's like some awesome driver, Saki does a super sharp turn when Yu tells her to and the giant spider hits the wall and then he's done, he's dead after that. Like gigantic spider gets knocked out and killed by being thrown against a wall, right? Well, they're like, yay, woohoo, we did it. We got the spider away from us. But Saki's not paying attention. And she drives right over the rail and into the city river. And because that, again, puts the boys' lives in danger, there's another big flash of light. With that flash of light, they go back to the kingdom. And they show you, you as a confronting the king. Uh, he's confronting the magic minister, the princess, and he says, I believe the magic minister is the one who's behind everything. And the magic minister says, well, what do you mean? And he says, well, when it all came to me, when uh, Miss Saki, my caretaker slash sister, said that Tokyo Ghoul knew her by name. No one else knows who she is other than you when I mentioned it and he's like, no, this isn't true. I have no idea what you're saying. This one is the knife being stabbed in the princess. Well, the princess has a particular spell around her, like a protective type of spell that counteracts any kind of danger that happens to her. So he said, she, Astrid, tells Nas, the magic minister, to remove his robes. If he has no kind of scar, then he should not be guilty. Well, he does end up removing his robes. He has the giant scar all over his body. Everybody is surprised. He says, I am actually Galaroth, because in my past life, I was the king's older brother who was sold to the Black Castle because my father basically didn't want me. I made happiness, I found a family there, but then father ended up attacking the Black Castle and I lost everything and I died. I brought myself back with alchemy using dead creatures' bodies and now I'm here to basically take over everything. Well, then there's this gigantic final battle that ensues and Galaroth turns into this gigantic dragon monster type creature thing. He can fly and he basically uh, is winning. He's defeating the boys, you know, everything they're trying to do. It's not really working. Well, all of a sudden, uh, during the fight, you get stabbed through his armor. Some kind of metal, large pole goes right through his armor and he's about to basically die. He's scared to die. He doesn't want to die, you know, but he's got nothing else to do. Well, Astrid is a magic user out of nowhere. They don't even give that impression. And then, of course, you have Haru, who's got still got the Black Knight armor on, but he's fighting with the good guys. And he basically uh, does his best to defend against Galaroth. Uh, doesn't do too well, but he's, you know, he's, you know, holding his own. Well, all of a sudden, when you was laying there, in pops up, da 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 the old man from the beginning of the movie. Turns out this old man is actually Arthur from the original Nino Kuni game. And all of a sudden, he asks the young man, are you afraid to die? And the young man, and you says, yes, I am afraid to die. And he goes, well, if you know what, I'm going to bestow this on you. 
my cane because it can only be bestowed on the people who are heroes. And you, my boy, are a hero. Now I better get back before the nurse wonders what's going on with me. And that's what he does. He's there for that short time and then Arthur leaves. He doesn't tell you his name is Arthur, but he's wearing Arthur's outfit. And soon as you holds up the cane, it turns out to be the legendary Moonstar. No, not Monstar for all of you older uh, viewers who know of the spin-off Silverhawks that came from Thundercats and Monstar was the bad guy. No, this is Moonstar, the legendary sword. And it turns out that not only does the cane turn into the sword, but it also heals you. You also get a help from a bird that appears periodically throughout the movie that is said only appears when there's a hero around. So obviously he's the hero. The bird helps him uh, by flying into the air because by this point, Astrid has been picked up and is being held by uh, Galaroth. And then he ends up chopping off his arm. Um, you chops off Galaroth's arm, uh, catches Astrid. The bird catches, you know, the bird drops them both off to the ground. And then Galaroth has, grows his arm back. He's attacking all of them. Well, next thing you know, he ends up knocking you down and he's about to give him the killing blow. And he's like, where's your sword? And he's looking around. Well, the sword was knocked back so far that Haru runs up, does this badass slide, grabs the sword, jumps up and says, now I have you and stabs Galarov straight through the head. You see it go through his head, his mouth, his chin. That destroys Galarov. He basically is done. There's no more evil in the world. As soon as everything is somewhat well, then there is a portal that shows up. And Astrid's like, as much as I don't want you guys to go, there's your portal, you gotta go home. Well, you and Haru basically say their goodbyes. They go to uh, the portal and you ends up staying back. When you stays back and Haru's only one who goes to the portal, they go back to the real world. Haru is basically in the hospital. He's survived the tragic crash into the river. Same with Miss Saki. Kotona is very well again, you know, her tumor is all done after the surgery they had with her. Uh, so everybody is good. But the minute Haru mentions you, it does this little heartbeat image type of thing that they do in a lot of animes and shows, and nobody knows who you is or ever heard the name Yusuke. Well, then that's when Haru basically says, hey, I realize that you are me in that world. You're my counterpart. You know, and that makes sense on why you are not here. You shouldn't be here in this world. And once he comes to that uh, finalization, so to speak, then they cut to you and the princess and they're walking up to the castle and the credits roll. Well, that's not it though, because the credits roll and next thing you know, you is being crowned king of Evermore and Astrid is crowned queen of Evermore, I'm guessing. And that's the end of the movie, Movie, and that is the movie of Nino Cooney on Netflix. So what do I think about the movie, Nino Cooney? Well, the plot was very lifeless. The movie was not very magical at all. I didn't connect to any of the characters whatsoever, and the story was very slow and uninteresting. All in all, I would give this movie a 6 out of 10. Maybe if they did a little bit better on everything else other than the animation. Animation wasn't that bad for 2D. You know, not the best, but it wasn't that bad. So if whoever uh, did this did a better job with you know storytelling and pulling me in and making me intrigued, that might have been a higher score then. But... I'm not, I'm going to stick with what I just said. On that, that's the end of this video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell to see my latest videos, and do me a favor, gemstones, stay shiny for me.